pieces flying around here. I don't know, I'm not. See, the first cut's not bad. Those hopes are getting dashed. This feels unsafe. Today I'm taking a look at this slicer, which I saw going around online. It looked interesting. I want to try it out for myself. I've seen it described as a cabbage shredder, as a multifunction shredder, but it's definitely a shredder. So let's see how it works in today's video. Now, I tried to unbox it earlier, but it wasn't much of an unboxing, but here's how that went. Let's crack this open and see what's inside. Wow, not much of an unboxing, is it? That's it, unbox is done. All right, so I paid about uh, six bucks for this on Timu. I've seen them on Amazon anywhere from eight to $18. I believe it's only for right-handed people, so it discriminates. So it's got two blades here. It's usually marketed as a cabbage slicer, but almost every listing I've seen shows it as a multi-vegetable slicer as well. Quality-wise, it actually feels pretty solid. I was thinking it might be kind of cheap. It's actually, you know, I'm trying to bend this. Pretty, pretty solid so far, although the handle feels kind of cheap. And taking a closer look at this, first of all, I just realized there's no like protective case for it. Like, <laughs> this is going to be loose in your drawer with these two blades in there. I'm not sure about that. Other thing is I noticed, is, is that rust? I'm not sure if that's rust or not, but I'm not sure if that's uh, the highest quality metal I've seen there. But I'll, I'll try cleaning that off and see what happens. Uh, the more I look at it, the less impressed I am by it. But let's, <laughs> let's find some vegetables and start cutting. All right, I wash it off and let's get started. I've got a half a head of cabbage here. Now, the way I was seeing it online is you're supposed to cut it in half and go along the edge just like that. I haven't used it yet, so we shall see. Now, it's only a right-handed, you can't use it left-handed. You can't, unless you're going to do it away from yourself. That, that seems awkward. So it's only for righties only. Sorry about that, lefties. You kind of got left out again. All right, here we go. And... All right, oh, it's working. It's kind of working. It's kind of working. It's definitely shredding it, but I, I, for some reason, I thought it was gonna take off more at any given time. It seems like it's a very small amount. Uh, my, my first impression isn't very uh, impressed, but let me, uh, let me keep going here. I'll take some of these, these looser leaves off. All right, I took some of the, 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 the green leaves off. Let's try, try some more. It's working, but it's kind of slow. Let me go to the other side here. Maybe there's just that maybe like maybe there's some nuances to it I'm not getting. I mean what I what I, I am getting is not bad, but what I'm just not getting a lot of it. I don't know if there's a technique issue or it just seems like it's just kind of gliding right across it. I'm not even really getting much. Maybe I need to press harder. I'll just try that. You know, the demonstrations didn't show it much beyond this. It seems like that's as far as I got and the demonstration ended. Now I know why. It doesn't it seems like once you kind of smooth out that edge, it's it's kind of difficult. Maybe you have to just keep looking for sharp edges. Now, some people on Amazon said it was really slow, so I'm starting to believe that. It's also kind of a mess. It's like I got pieces flying around here. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not overly impressed by this. For some reason, I, I really had kind of maybe higher hopes than I should have for this, and now they're, those hopes are getting dashed. I feel like I could just do better with a regular knife. I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, the, the final result isn't terrible. I thought I was going to glide through it. It's, not, it's gliding across it. It's not gliding through it. We don't want it to glide across it. It's gliding across and like, it's just, it's like smooth almost. It's not even, I'm having to really press kind of hard. You know, actually if I press really hard, it kind of works better. It seems like the smoother it gets, the less efficient it gets. I have to kind of keep looking for rougher areas, but now it's so smooth, I can't get anything. I think this looks good. I've seen better results elsewhere, but let's keep moving on to something else and see if we can get better results there. All right, I'm getting serious here. I'm not, no more wrestling around. Maybe it's better for red cabbage. Let's see. Focusing on the corner here and away from myself at a slight angle. Here we go. See, the first cut's not bad. It, it's, and then it kind of, once it smooths out, it's just, it's not so good. Maybe I need to focus on the, on the end more. See, that, that cut felt good. That felt good. See, some, some work, some don't. The cutting is very inconsistent. Some feel really good, some don't. And I feel like I'm just gliding across it now. Come on, man. Now I looked online and I saw someone doing it differently. So let me try their technique and see if that works. They were doing it right along this edge downward. So let's try that. I feel like my hand's kind of getting close here. I'm going to hurt myself. They were doing it straight down and that does not, that doesn't work at all. That does not work at all. Let me try this, this edge technique again. See, that feels pretty good. I'm looking for any bumps I can, but the more smooth it gets, the, the less effective it gets. There are moments where it feels great. And that now is smoothing out again. 
and doesn't feel so good anymore. That's so weird, man. It seems like half the cuts felt really good and the other half felt like they weren't doing anything. I don't know, I mean, the, the end result's pretty good. That's, that's not bad shredded cabbage, but I feel like there's better ways of doing it. But let's keep going. Maybe there's something I can find a good use for it. But cabbage, which is his main use, probably isn't it. Some people were showing uh, this for bell peppers. Let's uh, try that out now. This is a core from a different Kitchen Gadget video I did. If I recall, they were showing it like this on the edge. Let's see here on the bell peppers. See, the first couple cuts were, were all right. Not great, but all right. This feels, this feels unsafe. It's like very flimsy. I'm not sure which is more flimsy, the bell pepper or the, or the cutter itself. All right, I'm getting something going on here. Look at this. I'm like mangling this thing. This is not even, they're saying it makes even cuts. It makes the opposite of even cuts. It feel, a knife would be better. A knife, I mean, this is like, what is this? Come on now. Every one is cut differently. There's no uniformity whatsoever. I'm losing faith with every slice, but let's keep moving on because I, I can already tell you this is another failure. I've got to find something this works with. Let's keep moving on and see what I got. All right, I don't have a lot of things left to try, but I'm gonna keep working on it. They did show it being used on a carrot. Let's see, am I confident? Absolutely not, no confidence whatsoever. I'd love to be surprised, but I don't think I'm gonna be. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to look at this. Like it, it, you're supposed to get one cut through, this, through the first blade and then another cut through the second blade. That's kind of what it's supposed to go. I'm going slowly to see the function of it here. That's kind of how it's supposed to go. So the first blade just doesn't hardly, it's just too, it's not even, there's not enough gap there. The first blade, there's like no gap. The second blade has a bigger gap. Oh, come on, this is not good for carrots. Not only does it make anything resembling a uniform cut, but it's just flinging the little bits and pieces all, it's, it's a failure, this is a failure, come on now. Now the reason I'm cutting it off the end is because that's the demonstration I saw was doing it, but let's try lengthwise and see if we, that'll work. Maybe, maybe I can kind of peel it. It doesn't seem as good as a peeler, but I guess it's kind of working. It just seems like it just kind of slides across. I can sometimes get it to, to, to cut, but other times it won't cut, it just slides across. I don't know. I got one more thing to try. All right, I got some iceberg lettuce, the most benign thing you could possibly try to cut. Let's see if we can cut through this. If it doesn't cut through that, then I mean, it's already a failure, but let's see how much of a failure it really is. Let's see to what degree of a failure we get. All right, the first cut, not bad, not bad. Come on, I'm rooting for you to not be a total failure. And just like with the cabbage, once you smooth out that edge, there's like nothing, it doesn't cut anything. I noticed on the demonstration videos, they would cut a little bit around the edge and say, look, it works, but they don't cut the whole thing because they probably can't. There's just, I don't know, just, this is not good. It has failed every test I've thrown at it. Nothing even really looked, in fact, it got worse as I went. Nothing really worked that well. I just wonder what would happen if I try to pry up this bottom blade a little bit. Probably not a good idea, but let's try anyways. Using the screwdriver, I try to increase the gap a little bit on this on this first blade. Maybe that will help a little bit. I'm grasping at straws at this point. Let's see what we got. Well, that's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. I mean, I feel like maybe I, I improved it a, a tiny bit. Maybe it goes from an F to a D minus. Maybe, I don't know, it's still not very good. And once you get that smooth, smooth out section, you're really kind of in trouble. If you're wondering, I am pushing pretty hard. I mean, if the idea of this slicer is to make slicing easier, the, the amount I have to push to, to make it work for each, each pass is, is extensive. I'm pushing really hard. It's like, I'd rather just use a knife. I tried, I tried. This is what you get. I mean, this, this is an example of, you see these kind of things going on around a line. They look great. You get one and it's a complete failure. I mean, there are multiple versions out there. This might be the worst of the bunch or maybe they're all like this. I'm not sure. For my limited test of this particular model, I would say this is not worth buying. Well, before I go, I've got a few more questions I didn't get to in my last Q&A, so stick around for that. And I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks for sticking around. These are some questions I didn't get to in my last Q&A, so here we go. First question, this one asked, would you ever do a wig testing video? Buy wigs from Wish, eBay, Timu, Amazon, and see if there's any budget wigs out there worth buying. I'm not sure people want to see a wig review from a bald 55-year-old man. Although when I was young, I had beautiful hair. Of course, that was the 80s when, when a beautiful hair mattered to, to some guys. Uh, but seriously, I don't, I don't think that anyone would take a wig review from me very seriously. 
Never say never, but I wouldn't count on it. Adrian wants to know what's the product that you still have and love from the very beginning of all your reviews. Now I had looked back at my spreadsheet. The two oldest products that I still have that I use on any occasion at all would be the Tac Light and Hot Hands. Now I have to admit, I didn't like Hot Hands when I first used it, mainly because the commercials are so over the top, I was comparing to those. But once I started using it for a while and not really worrying about the goofy claims in the commercials, it actually wasn't that bad. The Tac Light, I believe, is still sold. I don't think Hot Hands are, but there's a lot like this online. Dudley asks, what do you think about the decline of ASEAN on TV infomercials on TV and what do you think of the new wave of products advertised and sold on YouTube and Instagram? Have you considered branching out to start reviewing sold on those platforms? Well it's kind of sad to see the ASEAN TV industry kind of fade out although those companies are still around they're just a little bit more mainstream than they used to be. I think the problem is a lot of the ASEAN TV style commercials became kind of a joke and you know people didn't really buy them they just made fun of them so I don't think they want to spend a lot of money on products everybody's just gonna goof on. Regarding the second question I do review a lot of the the, uh, the YouTube and Instagram products I'm just not a fan of, of a lot of the stuff that I see online. A lot of these so-called reviews out there on like TikTok Snapchat, especially Reels. A lot of these reviews are just people trying to sell products, so they're just giving you a snapshot of what it looks like when it works as best, but a lot of times they don't work so well when you actually get them, so. It seems harder and harder to find unbiased reviews out there. People are just trying to sell stuff. This person asked, do you have a best product for Bailey video? We love her interaction in your videos and often shop for the best of products for our fur baby. Love the de-shedding tools and fur removal gadgets, but would love to see even more. Now, Bailey's favorite products are tennis balls. She likes that over anything else. Uh, she likes the toys from BarkBox, like the crinkly ones that squeak, uh, but all she wants are tennis balls in, in the end. And as far as products that I use for her, I, I like the de-shedding brushes that I have. I have a couple of those. Um, but I get, get her groomed more often than I used to, so I don't use those as much as I used to. I tried things like the Bark Bath, which is pretty good, but I don't have a need for it. So I don't have a lot of Bailey products outside tennis balls and toys. I've got a couple questions from people who are talking about products for those who are unable to use one hand. Now, as I think back to products I've reviewed in the past, there are quite a few that would probably be beneficial to those who can only use one hand. The Sink and Spin for cleaning dishes, the Spill Knot for carrying glasses and bowls, the Rotato Express for peeling potatoes, the Handy Handle for pouring drinks, drinks and these gravity salt and pepper mills for grinding salt and pepper. Now I have to admit I haven't really considered that much in the past so thank you for bringing that up to me. I will try to keep this in mind moving forward. Uh, this person asked do you think you would ever review budget value priced home exercise equipment such as treadmills or stationary bikes? Now I haven't really done a lot of exercise equipment. I did some early on in my channel but not recently. I had something planned when I was working with my trainer a couple years ago but I haven't seen him recently. Uh, I'll keep that in mind and maybe I can come up with something for 2024. Uh, this person says, do you think when you do your reviews, you could say the power consumption of the products? I live off grid and that would be super handy to know. Now I do try to mention the power consumption when I'm doing products, but I often forget that. So now that you mention it, I'll try to do it more often. This person asks, what are some of the benefits of selling on Amazon as opposed to sites like eBay? Now, if I was starting off selling products now, I wouldn't sell on either one of them because they're both pretty competitive and a lot of people know how to game the system there. So it seems kind of unfair. If I was gonna be selling a product nowadays, I would actually just have a Shopify store, create a nice ad for a product, and run ads on social media. There's too many people on Amazon and eBay that, that rely heavily on reviews, and we're not sure all those reviews are necessarily real. Here's one that says, I want to buy an ice cube machine, but don't know which brands work or won't malfunction over time. So I reviewed the Frigidaire back in early August, and so far it's holding up, fingers crossed. If anything changes, I will let you know. Last question here. Chris wants to know if I have a blender review coming soon. Maybe I would like Vitamix versus Ninja versus budget one. Now, I usually do about one blender video per year and it's about time for my next one. So I'll try to see if I can come up with some different angle and hopefully post something very soon with that. Thank you to everyone who stuck around for this bonus q and I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.